Hey everyone, since we got some huge news on the upcoming hardcore server and we finally got the hardcore PTR, I wanted to, to do a big tips and tricks video. I've been playing hardcore since the very first day Cargo started at this challenge. I'm talking way back when he wanted to call it the Iron Man challenge, literally day one. I've lost many, many characters and I have of course completed the challenge as well. I'm also one of the admins of the hardcore community. So due to this, I've compiled up every important tip that I could think of and find and put it into this video. Feel free to use the timestamps to navigate where do you want to go. But before we begin, I want to urge you to check out the Hardcore Discord. This is a Discord full of 140,000 plus members just sitting there talking about hardcore. We have designated channels for death clips and highlight reels and near death experiences, uh, class related channels with a tons of tons and tons of guides and tips for every class and anything that you would need to be successful in hardcore. Not only that, but feel free to stop over at the stream at twitch.tv slash Kirksvives where I'm constantly streaming hardcore content and right now currently the hardcore PTR. Not just the Makara duels, but actually just leveling. I plan to get every single class to 60 on the hardcore server, as well as I'm aiming to be the first warlock to hit 60. And my guild frontier will be going in to clear all the raids world first, hopefully. And of course, hit the follow and the subscribe button here. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is the general tips. And the first one is going to be safety and patience. OK, don't rush on your journey. Take it slow. It's extremely easy for things to go south while leveling, especially while leveling quickly. Don't rush by a packs of mobs or attempt to do some funky skip that you saw some streamer do and just go slow. Kill everything around you and play it safe. Safety is the key to success in hardcore. You see, a lot of times people will try to skip through these mobs to get to an objective. Maybe there's a quest on the other end of this and there's a pack of mobs in between them. It'll skip them and they, more often than not will actually end up pulling two or three of them and kind of dying. So just make sure, be safe, pull everything you can. And plus, the more you kill, the more experience you get. And you're, this will further on another tip later, but you're going to want the most experience you can get so you can outlevel your zones. The next one is to not AFK. I know this might sound like an obvious one, but you'd be surprised at how many people step away from their computers for a brief second, then come back and see their character getting beat on. If you're going to go AFK, even for one minute, always log out. It only takes 20 seconds to log out when you're in the open world, so don't lose your character over it. Too many people go AFK to run to the bathroom or get a drink and they think they're safe on this road or on this thing, but then a respawn happens or maybe some funky path that they didn't know was going to be all the way there shows up and then it goes downhill from there. The next one is awareness. Awareness is key. Always keep your head on a swivel. It's something you will hear all of us hardcore players tell you all the time. Always be looking around at all of your surroundings. When you're fighting enemies, it's easy to get distracted by that enemy that you're fighting. You should always be looking around you while you're fighting because many mobs will be walking around and they can aggro to you. Too many times have we seen people not looking at where they're going and then more mobs come up and aggro them and they smack them out. Be very careful. Constantly look around. A lot of zones have roaming elites, which are, which are elites that are far over leveled to you. It could be as something as Morladim or Stitches or those Torrens and Loch Modan. There could be a million things that come up in the world that come up and aggro to you without you expecting it at all. Always be zoomed out and look around at your surroundings. The next one is logging out. You think it's kind of simple to log out and it is, but it's important to make sure you log out in a safe place. This is almost kind of going with the do not AFK tip a little bit earlier, but no matter how long you'll be logged out for, do not log out where mobs can jump you right when you log back into the game. Take the time to run to a road or better yet an inn or major city to get that precious rested experience. Sometimes you're going to log out for two minutes. That's okay. Just make sure you always log out. As we said earlier, this is much better than AFKing, but just make sure you are logged out in a safe place. The next one is stay rested. While staying rested in game gives you rested experience and it's always nice. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to actually staying rested in real life. The more tired you are, the more likely you are to make mistakes that you otherwise wouldn't make if you were rested up. Stay hydrated, stay rested, stay alert. I know that it's hard for some of us because we just like the game and we want a game till our eyes bleed, but make sure you do get some kind of rest because all it takes is one lapse of judgment and you might lose your character. This next one's pretty important. One of the most important ones, and that's know your class. One of the biggest tips is to know your class in and out. Know what spells and abilities you have, as well as what and when you should use them is massively important. Hardcore will have you using parts of your class that you may not be used to, and it's important to adapt to one of the more niche aspects of your class's toolkit. It's the difference between life and death. You're using some PvP spells and abilities that you normally wouldn't ever really use. So just be careful, learn your class in and out. There's tons of guides all over the internet for this. And over here at Icy Veins, we have written all of the hardcore guides for every class. Make sure to check them out because they're excellent and they're getting added to, updated, and worked on constantly. Links to all of them will be in the description below. This next one goes with the last tip as well. It's toolkit usage, as in use your toolkit. This goes off the last tip perfectly about knowing your class because knowing your class is part of knowing your toolkit and what you can use. 
Once you learn your class, make sure to utilize all of your toolkit. You'll find abilities and spells used in hardcore that you pretty much would never need in normal PvE or PvP content in Classic WoW, and it's important to know all of them. For example, Warlocks use curses that they otherwise wouldn't use. Rogues use poisons that you wouldn't really use, and stuns maybe you're not used to utilizing, or specs and abilities and talents that all classes kind of wouldn't really use. This is just a short example, but I think you get it. Make sure you use your toolkit, and once again, know your class. Next up is Professions. While professions are not mandatory, they are drastically helpful. I won't go into too far detail on each and every profession and its benefits, but you can check out the IC Veins Classic Professions page to get much in-depth information. But I will mention three very important professions that I think almost everybody should get. And that first one is Engineering. Engineering provides many bombs and grenades that we all know about that not only boost your damage, but also stuns all enemies, which can provide you with a head start to run away if needed, or maybe just get a bandage off or anything. Engineering also has some gear and items that can be crafted like the target dummy, which taunts all enemies around, acting almost like a get out of jail free card. It's really nice because as soon as you put it down, it taunts all the enemies around this, as you see in front of you. You can use this while running away if you aggro too many mobs as well. You can also use this offensively like you see on the screen right now to taunt mobs that you otherwise would not want to fight because they're dangerous and lets you skip that and get your quest done. Or cloth helms that you wouldn't even be able to get until 10 levels later. It's really nice. All professions bring some special stuff so just make sure to check out engineering and whatever profession you like and see what they can bring to the table. The next one would be first aid. No matter what you decide to do for professions, you should always, always pick up first aid, no matter what class you are, even if you have a heal button. This will provide you with many different types of bandages, depending on your skill level. You will always find enough cloth off the mobs to keep your first aid leveled up, so it's just a quick way to heal yourself. Don't worry about this taking up one of your primary profession slots, since it is a secondary profession. The next one is skinning, and it's a phenomenal way to earn gold while leveling. which you'll learn from a couple tips coming up, it is very important in hardcore. You can learn it very early from the first town you go to and just make sure you pick up a skinning knife as well next to the trainers usually by the supply vendors and skin everything you kill and vendor at all or this doubles because not everybody is skinning so a lot of people are killing these beasts that you can skin because they're not skinning them so you'll see just a bunch of dead bodies on the ground that you can skin and get all that free precious copper silver gold wherever you are this next section is going to be about items and storage and the first one on that is loot everything simple enough Get in the habit of looting every single enemy that you kill, even if you think it's not worth it. It's hard to come by gold and hardcore and you'll want your mount upon hitting level 40. A large majority of us are left at 40 hard farming our gold for our mount. Unless you're a warlock or a paladin, mounts are extremely expensive and you can expect it to take a while to get your mount. So make sure you loot everything and make sure you vend it. Another nice thing about this is all enemies are capable of dropping much more than loose change and some cloth. They also drop bind on equip items that can be very strong if you can use them and if you can't use them you'll be able to put it up in the auction house and make some good gold from it speaking of gold that's the next tip this applies to mounts as well but depending on what class you play you will have to buy much more spells and equipments and items and weapons than other classes skills spells and abilities can end up being quite costly and there are quite a few of them that you can skip every class actually has some that you can skip you can take a look at the icy veins hardcore guides for your specific class for an in-depth list of all spells and skills you can skip and save a ton of money the next one that goes with this is inventory space make sure you buy bags especially early on you'll be battling the inventory boss this means that you'll frequently have your bags full and end up leaving all that precious loot on the ground and like we said a couple tips ago you never know what's going to be on that loot so head to the auction house and pick up some cheap bags that'll help you out tremendously if you're not a fan of using the auction house or your solo cell phone, you can go to any general goods or bag vendor and pick up the little the simple six slots for five silver to start you off. Really easy to do, especially if you go with the other tip that we said with pairing it with skinning. The next one is keep potions stocked. This is the, one of the most important tips that will save your life. Stock up on health potions. This is important for every single class. You will certainly find health potions all the time in the open world. However, frequently check the auction house as well in any major city and try to pick up some of the same potions. To ensure that you always have a handful in your bags key bound and ready to be used the next one is bank alts now as we know we can trade on this server and whether you're for that or against that it doesn't really matter you can have a bank alt or let's call it a stash if to make it more simple this can act as a way to hold all your golden items 
If you find items, materials, or gold while leveling, make sure to have a level one bank alt already made and just send everything that you don't want and all your gold to this character. So if you die, you won't lose all that you've accumulated. It's a good way to save yourself, but also have a comfortable and healthier start on your next character. And finally, check the auction house. You're allowed to use the auction house on the official hardcore server. So make sure to check it frequently for new weapons, wands, armor, pots, elixirs, and any other items you think that can help you on your hardcore leveling journey. The next batch of tips is about zones. The first one being zone knowledge. Every zone has certain mobs that are special and even elite mobs or dangerous roaming mobs that can end your hardcore run rather swiftly. Always try to learn your zone before you start leveling there. You can find information all over the internet about special enemies and zones. So take the time to learn them and your run will be much safer. Things like stitches, more the dim, the, the, the Torin dudes that go out there and lock Modan. There, the list goes on. Sons of Argyle. There's so many things that can just clap you out everywhere. And it's very important that you know that almost every zone is somewhere dangerous you shouldn't be or an enemy that you shouldn't be around at all. And while we're on the topic of knowing your zones, Rested XP has a brand new survival guide that literally warns you about all the dangerous mobs in your zone. It'll tell you which elites to watch out for, which mobs stun and respawn, what quests to skip, and much, much more. Level efficiently, and more importantly, level safely with the survival guide. A link will be in the pinned comment as well as the description, and you can use code Cricks to save some money and get it cheaper. Which leads to the next one, caves. Now look, I'm not gonna harp on caves. Everybody knows they're dangerous, but caves and mines are the most dangerous places in the game. Most of them are enclosed with only one way in and out, meaning you have nowhere to run if things go badly. Respawns are the main cause of deaths here. You'll think that you're fine and you, there won't be any mobs around you. Then out of nowhere, all these mobs respawn on you and you have no way out. Not only are they full of creatures, but other players in caves can be just as deadly. They don't mean to be, but it's possible for another person to be running for their lives from pulling too many mobs and then they'll die and all those mobs leash onto someone else close to them. If you must go into these dark places for whatever quest you're doing, never skip any mobs and move to your objective as fast as you can and as safely as you can. And then if you can, Hearthstone out of it when you're done or perform a logout skip. This next tip is about water. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about water for a second. Water can be a very dangerous place. We all know that you can drown. It's a possibility. It happens all the time because it becomes very easy to forget to look at the breath meter while you're fighting mobs underwater, especially fighting multiple mobs. Plus, people have a lot of trouble with disconnecting underwater while fighting mobs as well. So make sure to be extra careful in the water. And it's always suggested to pick up some elixir of water breathing from the auction house to make it even that much safer. Next tip is about weapon and gear upgrades. Make sure that you keep your weapons and gear upgraded as you level. This is very important for some classes more than any other, like melee for weapons, but it's also very important to keep it all upgraded. Largely weapons for melee players as you level because you're based off weapon damage. More so than a caster where it doesn't really matter how much weapon damage we have on our weapons, right? Always check vendors and the auction house for new affordable upgrades. You can also check for rares in your leveling zones as they often have solid upgrades and you can easily track them with a rare scanner add-on. The next up is a couple combat tips. First one, over leveling. Always try to be one or two levels higher than where you're leveling. Remember that mobs can be green, yellow, orange, and red. Red means that you should avoid them at all costs. You should never be fighting these guys. You should never be around them. Orange means that you can kill them, but you really shouldn't be fighting them as you have a much higher chance to miss, and it's just not that safe. Yellow mobs are on par with your own level and a good option to fight. You'll find yourself fighting them frequently, and you can feel pretty safe fighting them. However, green mobs are a couple of levels lower than you and are the best enemies to fight. You have the highest chance ever to hit them, and since you're a couple levels higher, you'll be able to kill them so much faster while they do much less damage than you. If your questing add-on tells you to fight yellow or orange mobs, then it's wise to mob grind for a little to get to that next level up before going back to questing. Next up, group dungeon safety. Now, dungeons are a great place for experience and of course, brand new gear. While it's suggested to do most of the dungeons if you can, it's important to also make sure that you and your group are a good level range to do the dungeon. Don't enter the dungeon if players in your party are underleveled. It's suggested to make sure everyone is at least yellow to all the mobs. The next one's about enemy nameplates. Make sure to turn on your enemy nameplates, which are by default off. I know this sounds silly. This will help you keep track of the health of all the mobs around you and if they're aggroable. Plus, if you have any dots, poisons, bleeds, it lets you know the remainder time on them and all that. It's really important. About as important as the next tip, which is line of sight. A lot of enemies cast spells, typically dealing a ton of damage. 
Luckily, you can line aside all casters, simply moving out of the site when you see an enemy start casting their spell, and you'll find yourself looking much, much healthier. You see a mob casting, you hide behind a wall. You see a mob casting, oh, hide in the doorway. You get it, get used to it, it'll save your life. The next one is Z axis. Z axis means that mobs can hit you vertically. For example, if you're upstairs and the enemy is downstairs, you will still be able to be hit. Many hardcore players have died this way. This makes towers very, very dangerous. So make sure you kill everything as you're running up and down through the vertical areas. The next tip is kiting. Kiting can prolong a mob hitting you and cause you to take less damage. Some classes like Warlock, Hunter, Rogue, Mage, the list goes on, can easily slow their enemy down and run faster than them to get out of range while waiting for cooldowns, energy, mana, health, etc. to come back. Warlocks can put slow curses on them. Warlocks can dot them and run around. Mages can permanently slow and blink away. Hunters can, you know, concussive shot, use their pet. Kite, they can do so many things. They have they, Hunters are amazing at kiting. We already know this, right? Rogues can gouge kite where they use gouge. They keep running away. They get more room, throw weapons. There's so many things people can do. Which leads to the next one, kiting with obstructions. Part of kiting is kiting mobs around fences or pillars like you see right now. If you jump over a fence, the mob will not jump over it with you. Instead, it will run all the way around. This is the same with pillars or anything else that you can jump around or down or up. Mobs do not jump. They take the long way around. So utilize your damage over time spells, poisons, bleeds, whatever else you need to get your advantage with the terrain. You can even just simply jump over a fence and then use a bandage real quick. It happens all the time. This next one is, well, be prepared to run. This is a very simple one, but many people won't do this. Always be prepared to run. When fighting enemies in the open world, you should be constantly looking for a way out and ready to flee. The world is very dangerous and it can go from safe to deadly in an instant. So be prepared for it. When you see things start to turn south, run. Don't be afraid, just go. The next tip is an alliance only tip. Sorry, Horde, but the light of a loon. This is an alliance only item that will make you immune to all damage for 10 seconds. This can be used to simply run away or hearthstone out of sticky situations. Make sure you have a macro that uses light of a loon and hearth at the same time. So you don't miss a second. And this can even save you from taking lethal fall damage. The list goes on. However, this is a one time use item. Once you use it, you'll never be able to use it again. So use it wisely. This next tip is the zoom out. This might sound silly, but make sure you play zoomed out. A lot of people play zoomed out all the way, but some people can't stand that. And if you're one of them, at least don't be zoomed in all the way. You know what I mean? You need to be able to look around your, your character often. The more you're zoomed in, the less you can see. I'll put a macro in the description and I'll show it on screen right now. That will allow you to zoom out further than the default camera zoom. It's just slash console and camera distance max zoom factor 3.9 all into one line. These next few tips can possibly be the most important ones. This one's leashing. Leashing is a very important mechanic to everyone in this game and can sometimes be the difference between life and death. A leash begins when you attack a target. Once you attack a target, he is now leashed to you. In order to break this leash, you must not cast anything or interact with the mob for 10 to 13 seconds. This means no crowd control, spells, melee damage, etc. If you do, this resets the leash timer. In order to drop a leash, you must be at least 31 yards away from where you originally aggro the target. If you do any damage to the target, it resets this leash, making the mob continue to chase you. Mobs can also reset their leash if they stand still for at least a second. For this reason, when you're trying to reset your leash, always keep moving. There's much more that goes into leashing and Calamity has an amazing video about leashing that you see in the background right now. It goes over every single thing you need to know about this leashing mechanic. She's done a ton of research on mob distance, leash queuing, de-rendering, chain leashing, and much more that's vital to leashing. I urge you to check it out. It'll be linked in the description and you can check her out over on Twitch where I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any of your questions. This piggybacks off something called pet leashing. Expanding upon the previous section even more, warlocks and hunters have a pet that messes with their leashing, and it can be annoying, but it can also be pretty helpful. Whenever a pet hits the mob, the leash is now queued to that pet. This means whenever our personal leash breaks or resets, like we mentioned earlier, the mob will just then run to your pet, and now your pet has the same leashing scenario. However, you can then cast anything on the target to get that aggro back or simply run away. This can be extremely handy when fighting all types of mobs out in the open world. Knowing how to handle your leash can be one of the most important things for your survival. A very helpful thing that you can do as a warlock or a hunter is bounce aggro back and forth between each other using this leashing mechanic. You can start by both you and your pet hitting the enemy, putting your pet on stay while you run away, but don't out render the pet. Then once the mob stops attacking you, he'll run back to your pet. You can then pull threat off of it by casting literally anything. This process can be repeated as many times as you need. 
This pet leashing technique can also be used if you need to escape. Simply talk with your pet or drop the leash on your pet, press stay and run away. The mob will despawn with your pet. Okay, this next tip is about split pulling. Split pulling can be very important when looking to fight more than one mob. If you see a pack of enemies and you pull them with your normal skill, throne, or spell, you will pull the entire pack and the pack will all be leashed together. This means if you try to run away, all of them would chase you for the entirety of the leash. Split pulling, if done correctly, will pull all the mobs, but once you run past your leash, all but the one you're attacking will de-leash off of you. This is nice when you need to kill only one of the enemies in the pack. You can split pull by using an AoE item like a grenade or a spell like Blizzard or Rain of Fire or body pulling by running close enough to the mobs. Then when you pull, run away while still casting something on the target you want to kill and all of them besides that target will reset after you meet the criteria for breaking a leash. Last couple ones here are pretty big, but keybinds. You should keybind all of your abilities and important items like potions ensuring that they're in an easily accessible location for you to reach when needed. You do not want to be in a panic situation when you're frantically opening your bags and rushing to click your potion. This is an easy way to die and I see people dying while moving their mouse and trying to click potions and stuff all the time. Keybind it, remember it. And the last one for this video is the strafe and days. Strafing can help you get around much better than keyboard turning left and right. Plus you can get days if you get hit from behind while running from enemies. Strafing is an easy way to avoid this. Go to your keybind settings, get and set strafe left and right to A and D and get used to it. I promise you, you will not regret this at all. And that's it for this one, guys. This is just one of my mini hardcore videos starting out this hardcore journey. This is all about tips and tricks. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Once again, please stop by the hardcore discord. Check that out. Divide out over there. You got a ton of things you can look out for over there. And of course, check out the stream twitch.tv slash cricks vibes where I'm streaming hardcore content all the time. I'm hyped for the server. I know we're all pretty excited and I hope you guys are too. If you have any more tips, throw them down in the comments. I've got a ton more that I'll do. I'm more like a part two type of video. Okay. Really hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, good luck out there.